answers are unquestionable and questions unanswerable. It, it brings in the idea of philosophy with the context of a progressive discipline that moves by asking questions, questioning answers until questions are unanswerable and answers unquestionable. It, it presents philosophy as a progressive discipline or an area of study. And philosophy asks rational questions. Rational questions about the nature of the universe, rational questions about the nature of knowledge, rational questions about religion, rational questions about history. These are the concerns of philosophy. And I have a definition of philosophy, which uh, I, I have uh, given in my PPT. It, it is an academic discipline that exercises the principle of reason and logic in an attempt to understand and articulate reality by providing answers to fundamental questions about knowledge, about morality, and the nature of the universe. And here we talk about cosmology. If these are the questions that philosophy asks, it means that philosophy has different disciplines. In the PPT, you will find a tree that points out to different disciplines in philosophy. It deals with uh, uh, epistemology, and epistemology talks about the area of knowledge, certainty of knowledge, how reliable knowledge is, the basis or the foundations of knowledge. This is within the context of philosophy. And then there is logic, and logic concerns herself basically with the, 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 the movement of your argument, how they follow each other, how coordinated they are, how the premises you provide are able to lead to a very sound conclusion. You have the area of metaphysics. Metaphysics is a study of being, being qua belongingness. It deals with being, everything that does exist. And uh, within metaphysics, originally metaphysics is beyond the physical, meta, beyond, then physics, physical. And so when we deal with metaphysics, we are dealing with beyond the metaphysical. That is in its etymology. But bringing it to a better understanding of metaphysics, it is not just about that. It deals with that which is beyond the physical. It deals with everything that exists, being as belongingness, being as that which does exist. I exist, you exist, my books exist, my computer exists. All this come within the context of being. Then you have the area of cosmology, the nature of the universe, and so on and so forth. Now we deal with religion. What is religion? Religion is one of those areas or disciplines that has been very difficult to define. For the simple reason that religion is an enigmatic concept. Religion is one thing to the scientist. It is another thing to the biologist. It's a different thing to the anthropologist. It's a different thing to the sociologist. And so every attempt at defining what religion is has actually led to a complication of the understanding of religion. In spite of these perspectives, thinkers are not agreed on what religion is. In fact, Professor Luba made an attempt to understand religion. And in that attempt to understand religion, Professor Luba brought together 48 definitions of religion from different authors and professors. And then he added two of his own definitions of religion to make the definition 50 in number. Then he articulated these 50 definitions of religion and then was able to produce a definition of religion. Although other thinkers had given 47 definitions of religion, those 47 definitions were rejected. Now Professor Luba added two of his own and gathered these different definitions of religion with the aim of developing a comprehensive concept of religion. At the day that Professor Luba presented his definition of religion, taken from 50 different definitions of religion, his definition of religion was rejected. Which means that an understanding or the definition of religion is not something that you say that you have that is static. The definition of religion varies from person, from one thinker to another, from one scholar to another, from one work to another, from one discipline to another. But not minding the different definitions of religion, there are three basic elements in any understanding of religion. 
And these elements are the elements of belief. Because there must be a belief in the supreme being. There is also the element of cult and worship through which the human person expresses his respect and adoration for that supreme being. There is that aspect of morals in religion and these morals establishes the basis of relationship between the human person and that supreme being that is in existence. And so three things in every understanding of religion, in spite of the differences in understanding of religion, in spite of the enigmatic concept of religion, these three basic tenets are always found in religion. Uh, there is the sense of belief, there is cult and worship, and there is morals. Now, having understood religion, having understood uh, philosophy in very simple terms, we now come to the basic concern of our study. And that basic concern is, how is SPSS applicable in the study of philosophy and religion? First of all, let us begin with a general understanding of research so that we gain from here where SPSS is applicable. First of all, in every research, at the very beginning, we begin with the question, what is the problem? Every research begins with a research problem. It is when you have gotten a research problem that you know that your research is researchable. Without a research problem, your research is not researchable. It is the research problem that actually gives you the context for the generation of the topic for your research. You don't generate a topic for research when you have not identified the research problem. The research problem should be that which moves you to begin to think of that research. And then gradually, you articulate what you want to do within the context of a title. The application of SPSS is not in this first level of research. It's not at the level of research problem. The next stage in research is to select the research design. What method of research are you going into? What are you interested in doing? Or what you are interested in discovering? Or what you are interested in finding out will determine the research methodology or the research design that you are going to employ? Is it going to be a qualitative research? Is it going to be a quantitative research? What kind of method are you going to use during the process of research? Is it going to be observation? Is it going to be questionnaire? Is it going to be, what kind of method are you going to? These are the basic questions you bring to bear while trying to design the research method, the research design. Now, the research design has a connection with the execution of the research design. And the execution of the research design, that is actually where the SPSS comes in, in research methodology. Therefore, research methodology, the SPSS does not come in at the point of research problem, even though it is related. It does not come in at the point of research design, even though it is related. It comes in at the point of executing the research design. When you have had your research design and the time for its execution comes, then you begin to bring in the idea of SPSS because it helps you in the analysis of data. It helps you in the analysis of data, statistical analysis of data. When you collect the data, when you have executed the design, and then you begin to analyze what you have, that is where SPSS comes in in research. Now, after you have collected your data in SPSS and analyzed it, then you give a report in the next day. That is communication of research result. And so research design, when it comes to SPSS, SPSS is found within the context of the execution of research design, in between the research design and the report that you give. As I said earlier, SPSS is concerned about quantitative research. How does this relate to philosophy and religion? 
most especially when it comes to philosophy and religion, researches are not basically quantitative. Researches in philosophy and